Hi, this is Michelle Rumschlag, Naturalist, and welcome to Virtual Experiences with the Hancock Park District. It's Friday, so we're hitting the trails. This month we've been talking all about maple sugaring, and in this session we're going to talk to you about sap science. So let's do a little refresher. Does everybody know what sap is? Well, it's the sugar water that lives inside of trees, and all trees have that, but it's the sugar maple that has a higher sugar content in their sap. So we're going to talk about how the sap flows up the tree and trying to get those nutrients, that sugar water, to this coming year's leaves. So I have a poster here, and this is true for all trees. So actually next to me is an oak tree, so I know it's not a sugar maple there. But we're at our site where we normally do our sap science talk for our school days by the overlook at Litzenberg Memorial Woods. So inside the tree, there's kind of like little runways or tubes where things flow up and that's called the xylem. So this time of year, all of that sap is frozen at the bottom of the tree. But as we're getting those warm days, nice sunny days where it's 40 degrees, it's gonna melt and it's gonna start slowly going up those xylem tubes, again, to those buds, kind of signaling them saying, hey, spring is upon us, it's time to start making our food. So of course the leaves will come out and they make their own sugar that they send back down through the tree. And that's going down, um, the tubes are going down through the phloem tubes. So things are going up and things are coming down. Now it's a little different for sugar maples because within that sap wood, which is just inside the bark, instead of having water around that sap wood, sugar maples have carbon dioxide. So when it's cold out, these cells expand, kind of creating negative pressure that then forces that sugary sap to go up to the top of the tree. So other trees are having things flow. For some reason, the sugar maples have a little more pressure behind it when that's happening. So you might be wondering why I've got this little neat contraption here to my tree and a burner's can. So this is to show kind of at a larger scale of how that pressure is building. So I'm gonna take our can, and we always use Verner's. Through some testing of our own, this is the best one to do this. So of course, I'm gonna shake it up. Now you've all dropped a can or something, and you've opened it too fast, and all that carbon dioxide, or again, those bubbles or carbonations coming out, and it kind of makes a mess. Well, I'm gonna show you how that's happening here, like on a grander scale. So again, all this pressure is building up inside our can, just like it's building up the base of that sugar maple tree. So with all that pressure, it needs to go somewhere. So in the tree, it goes up to those buds. The can now, it has nowhere to go until I force it to go somewhere. So I wanna make sure I shake it nice and good here. And I'm gonna put it back in our holder. I'm gonna stand back. So all I have is a little stick with a copper tube and an area that's got a spike there. So hopefully this will work, because I only have one can of pop. So I'm gonna get ready, and as I pop it, you can see, <laughs> it came back and got me. It kind of went all over area there. So again, that carbonation needed to go somewhere. So when I created the hole, that's where it went, kind of spraying all over our tree here. Again, this is all happening internally inside that sugar maple. So kind of neat stuff. So remember to join us on Monday for another story all about maple sugaring. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.